India is a place where we have a huge multitude of population and as we know land is scarce uh, where uh, and not just scarce but it has multiple uses so land can be used for agriculture it can be used for grazing it can be used for industry it can be used for sett settlements and so on and so forth and in today's day and age land acquisition as such is becoming a more of a problem uh, in this in this context we have a huge um, plan to do 100 gigawatts of solar power plants in india now this would require huge amount of huge tracts of land now not just multiple uses but land further kind of has other problems associated with it one there is to find a plain uh, uh, un, uh, plain terrain which is shadow free is again a difficult proposition uh, you can find it in wastelands but again to convert those wastelands into power plants one has to kind of do a lot of effort into making those areas plain a floating power plant on the other hand does away with these disadvantages so on a, a water body you have a flat surface which is completely plain uh, it has no undulations secondly it has it captures no dust from the atmosphere now in case of solar power plants one of the biggest enemies of a solar power plant so to say is the dust accumulation on the solar panels now in case of water body that dust accumulation does not occur thirdly uh, you have uh, if you look at the current um, regional uh, focus of solar power plants we have most of our power plants in the western region of india now western region of india also has very high temperatures now there is a constant or there is a relationship between temperature and how the solar panels function above 25 degree centigrade which is the operating temperature of a solar panel every degree rise decreases the efficiency of the solar panel by almost 0.45 degrees centigrade uh, percent so let's say if you are operating at an ambient temperature of 45 degrees centigrade you already are putting down your efficiency by 10 percent and that too in a solar um, in a solar industry where your photovoltaic modules at maximum provide 20 percent efficiency so in case of a water body you have natural evaporative cooling that happens so water evaporates and which kind of cools the back of the uh, solar panels now this kind of maintains an ambient temperature so this can increase the efficiency of a floating solar power plant vis-a-vis -a, -vis a land based solar power plant by almost 5 to 10 degrees centigrade a floating solar power plant uh, the possibility of dual access tracking that we have developed that yellow has developed is a very cost effective method to generate 30 percent more power now conventionally you place the mo modules according to the latitude of the place uh, they put it at an angle uh, uh, south facing according to the latitude of the place now what does that mean that means that only when the sun is in its peak which is between let's say about 11 o'clock in the morning till about 3 o'clock in the afternoon where the sun is south facing and the sun is at its maximum peak does the power plant generate the most electricity however as virtue of the solar panels if we are able to follow the sun as the sun moves from east to west or as the sun moves from horizon to zenith and back to the horizon if we are able to follow the sun, we'll be able to generate more electricity because we'll be able to increase the duration for which the solar rays are falling on the panels and we'll also be able to maximize the peak. So the maximum solar insulation are absorbed or are taken into consideration when energy is being considered. So this in general provides almost about 20 to 25 percent extra efficiency now in case of a floating solar power plant uh, the 10 percent extra efficiency comes from natural evaporative cooling 
So both these put together, you can almost have about 30% extra energy generation. Since so a floating solar power plant or land neutral power plants are a new conception and are a new entity as of now, the cost till we get to a utility scale is uh, it has not been established so far. Across the world, the cost varies from 10 crores to 12 crores per megawatt. What Yellow is trying to do is we are trying to put that cost to 8.5 crores to 9.5 crores per megawatt. Uh, that is depending on the site conditions, depending on what, uh, what conditions we are working on. Apart from that, this price is justified from the fact that one is producing 30% more energy. So as compared to a land based, which you can get at 7 crores and 8.5 or um, let's say even at 6, 6 crores if you get a land based power plant at 8.5 you are producing that much extra energy to offset the capital cost of land based solar power plant. So in the end the unit cost of power which is the ultimate commodity to a consumer that can be stabilized in competition with land based power plants. A uh, 1 megawatt of power plant, the space requirement is almost similar to what would be required at land, which comes to approximately 12 square meters a kilowatt. Now, um, through our design, there are multiple possibilities. We can establish a 1 megawatt power plant in a block of 120 meters by 120 meters. Or if you kind of divide it, into several of uh, these smaller modules, then over two and a half acres, one can easily establish a one megawatt power plant. The whole idea or conception of putting up a solar power plant was aeration of the lake. Because past news uh, stories have put that because of the decreasing BOD levels in the lake, a lot of fishes that are in the lake that are dying. Now with this uh, putting up of this solar power plant and aerators uh, which is in our case which are the fountains, uh, one can increase the level of BOD hence which gives a better chance of survival for the fishes in the lake. <laughs>